Now, books being turned into movies isn't anything new. It's been done since it's been done since probably the beginning of Hollywood when nobody had any original idea. So they're like, "Hey, let's just get this random book we don't care about and turn it into a movie." And how about that? We can make millions of dollars off of it. And sometimes it has been a success. Uh, Harry Potter is one of the high is one of the highest grossing franchise in in film history. Uh, the Avengers are technically part of a, a book series since they are from comic books. And also DC, uh, Maze Runner I've, has made a lot of money. Percy Jackson, never mind, we don't talk about Percy Jackson. Uh, <clears throat> technically, there technically there have been a bunch of movies about the Greek gods, and they all come from the, um, and they all have come from the Odyssey of from the Odyssey of Homer. So yeah, so we have a, a bunch of Greek god movies, but. This movie, but this book in particular, uh, it has like, but there's this book in particular that I really, really love, and I still read it to this day. That I'm surprised it's been turned into a movie. It's a, it's a book. It's a book about uh, about called Miles, <clears throat> called Miles Murphy, who goes into a new who goes into a new school and tries to live up to the legacy of being of being the school's greatest prankster, but there's already a prankster in this school. Even better than him. And that book is called The Terrible Two. Now, ever since I've read this movie since like fifth grade, I was enamored by it. I was enamored by Miles' character. I was enamored by, heck, even Niles in the movie. And Principal Barkin, in my opinion, has... As a... is funny in, in the book as well. I like the... I like how this movie is like kind of like a spoof on mystery movies. Because instead of... um. Uh, Niles and Miles having um, having like oh this clue leads to this oh this clue leads to the school prankster it's not that all they do is lie and cheat their way in just so that, um, just so the principal's kid can stop cheating on the elections and also because he's a douchebag anyways yeah they, they, anyways this book is amazing if you see it next time it, if you don't know what the cover looks like it looks like um like in the thumbnail if it's in your bookstore please read it now i know some people say what about the terrible two the terrible two get worse or terrible two go wild i mean those books are good just not as good as the first one you know because the first one i had so many memories of reading it and the second and third one just um didn't didn't make it feel right to me you know they didn't feel right also because i'm a huge fan of the of the iconic red and blue red beat with red with miles and blue with niles yeah, the second book, yeah, the second book is about Principal Barkin's dad being the new principal of the school since in the first one he kind of retired, I think. I think that's what happened. And he he become like this evil emperor, like imagine uh, Principal Barkin being a funny villain in the first movie and then the sequel has like Shen from Kung Fu Panda from Kung Fu Panda 2. That's like the whole aspect, like you got this funny, charming, like you got this funny, hilarious, uh ridiculous villain. Uh, in the first movie, and in the second one, you got one that is like freaking straight up evil. And a terrible two go wild. They make Josh the antagonist. I think I haven't read that book in a long time. But like the first one should always be endearing to my heart. And and I think and I think this book is for like anyone who feels like um, they're not gonna do well in the new school that they're moving in. But the reason why I'm surprised it hasn't turned into a movie is because this movie actually has a actually has the stuff to be turned into a great comedic movie now how is this movie going to cut out all right we got to make it like the book right but we got to make it genuine like the book so we're going to ask people who like who like the book so much that they wanted to write into a screenplay or we can just ask the original writer the original authors of the book and say hey uh do you have any time to uh write a, a script for the terrible two and if they say yes that's amazing but if they say no, then that means we're gonna have some, some substitutes. But if they like the, but if they really like the book, then, well, we uh, we found our new screenwriters. Now after that, the animation. Now we don't want it to have typical 3D animation mixed with like mixed with like 2D outlines like the bad guys. We want it to be 2D animated, but like but it has to have like that sketchy feel because one thing that I like about the Terrible Two's art style and the and the illustration is that um, they're not perfect. They're not sleek. They're not outlinish. Uh, you know, they like um, their heads. Yeah, sorry, their 
their heads have a have a scrapings out. It kind of felt like a sketch. It felt like it didn't feel like a final sketch. It felt like um they were still in the process of the characters. So yeah, we want to have that imperfect animation to make the movie perfect. To make the animation the movie's animation perfect, you know. And yes, we will make it have that traditional smooth animation. We can have different frame rates because there are some. Yeah, we can have some Spidey Spider Verse animation in this. Like uh, there, like for example, the scene whenever they're about to get the cows in the school, that could have frame rates. Or like Principal Barkin moving ar moving ar around the school and the, and the crickets, and the crickets moving around. Another scene that could have different frame rates is the um, is Principal Barkin trying to get the cows out of the school. Or them animating the car that got in that got into the school step onto the school steps. So yeah, we can have different frame rates. We can have the same sketchy, the same messy, sketchy looking animation of uh, the same sketchy looking illustrations from the books to animation. You know. And the best part of all, it has to be made by an animation team that really likes animation. Now I think DreamWorks should be a great fit because they because they are trying new ways with animation, but uh, we can't get them to Sony because like nine times out of ten they make a bad movie. I'm, I know you guys are saying, but they make Cleo with a chance of Meatballs One, Spider Verse. Uh, you know those films they gave us Boo from Open Seas. Yeah, I know, but they haven't given us. Yeah, but they also gave us the Smurf and Peter and Peter Rabbit. I think. So no, we're not gonna give them to Sony. Hell no, we're not gonna give it to them. I mean, sure, we can have them have the same team, but no, I'm not betting my chances with Sony. They don't care about animation. And I'm sure as hell, no, I'm sure as hell I'm not going to give it to Pixar. They're going to say, well, listen, let's make the animation in this movie 3D, but it's 3D. Like, Pixar has the most boring animation I've ever seen. Like, some people say that the animation looks amazing, but in my opinion, I just get tired of the animation Pixar does. Do something cool and unique. Pixar... Pixar, did DreamWorks has done something new with animation. Why don't you? Are we stuck in the same lane? You don't even like your you don't even like your movie. Strange World came out today. Lightyear made so much bad money. They don't, they don't even try anything with animation. Like like it was cool when Toy Story one came out, but it got tired whenever that's the only thing they made. Sure, there's a new Spark Shorts, but are they made by Pixar? No, they're not. I mean I mean technically yes they are, but we need to have more feature length animated. Movies with 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 different animation styles. So yeah, I'm 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 giving my money to DreamWorks about it. I don't know about A24. They only made like one animated movie, and it's really 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 good. But I but but I feel like we should give it to DreamWorks because they they are experimenting new different styles in animation. They did it with Puss in Boots one, with Puss in Boots two, and the bad guys. Now, now, time for the script. Now, the script we want to make it funny. All right, we got we're trying to make it funny like the books. You know, we got to make it funny. We got to make it charismatic. Then, like, we got to make the characters likable. We got to have that same, uh, same style. So we're gonna have to think up of a director for this. Now, some people are gonna say, "What about Wes Anderson?" Now, yes, I can think of some ways Wes Anderson can do it. Like, for example, he can. I can. I can imagine a Wes Anderson style version of the Forty Things Principal Barkin did that day. And that's really all I could all I could think of, or them, or Niles and Miles and Niles explaining to Miles about the first April April Fool's Day. But really, that's all I can see. What's Anderson doing? I'm sorry. So we're gonna need a director that knows whatever that knows what what he's doing, that knows what he she is doing. You know, we need to have someone that really likes animation is and don't think it's just a freaking uh, kid genre for exclusively made for kids, but really have a passion for it. You know. I don't know who the, about the directors. No, definitely not James Gunn. Uh, because I don't think he can do this kid-friendly stuff. Hmm. What director should we have this movie for? Hmm. I don't know. Please someone tell me in the comments of, of a director who has made uh, movies about... Uh, animated movies with, with great animation styles that do... Yeah, that are about the themes of this book about not fitting in and then fitting in later. That don't feel cliche. Now, voice actors. We need voice actors. All right. So, I'm thinking, Miles Murphy, no, we're not going to give him the traditional, uh, make an adult voice a child character in this movie. No, 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 no. We got to make this movie feel genuine. So, we're going to grab a random 15-year-old 
and a, a, we're gonna grab a random 15 year old and a random and a, another random 15 year old as Niles. Uh, not sure who could play Niles. Mm, not Jacob Tremblay. Uh, let's see. Who can play Niles? I don't know. But who could play Miles? I don't know. But, we, but one thing, don't just say, okay, you are Miles, you are Niles, action, read your lines. We've got to make them have chemistry, you know? They can have ad-lib lines too, you know? It, it kind of makes it feel genuine because this is a movie about pranksters. They can't be pranking around in a set, you know, and adding their own lines that aren't even in the script, you know? They can have freedom as well. Now, now Niles, we're going to have to make it a childish voice, you know? Kind of like a... We're gonna make it like a childish voice when he's talking when he's talking in like the school uniform outfit to make him seem innocent. But then when he meets with with Miles in the in the ranch, uh, later after the Cody Bird Tyler party, we gotta make him like a stern voice of attention, you know. And also, and that should also be the voice of him when he's talking to to Miles. Now Miles, I don't know how he should sound like, but he should sound like kind of bit. Um, you know, the voice sounds. I'm trying to have. I'm trying to find like a kid with um. We gotta try to make it find like a kid is fitting in here, not too quiet, but not too, but not to have a loud mouth either. And speaking of loud mouths in this book, Stewart. I think Stewart should have like a. I think we should have like a like a female character, like a female voice actor, like voicing because I I can't think of a dude voicing him. Like, like I like one of the best examples of that is like where is the teacher? Like, like I can't think of a voice actress doing that. Of doing that, not not a male one, unless he has a horse a horse voice. Now Josh Barkin, Josh Barkin, I feel like he should be voiced by Gray Delisle, or whatever how you pronounce her name. Let me see if it is her. I don't think it's her. Hold up, bear with me. Yeah, it's her. Yeah, it's her. Now, I'm, I now make fun of make fun of me. I don't care. But I feel like she's like she should have a you know puppy corn's voice from Unikitty, you know, because. Uh, yeah, because I can imagine Josh Barkin having that voice. You know, I'm just saying, Gray the Loud could voice Josh Barkin. I know somebody. I know. I know y'all are gonna say, but I thought you said no adult actors voicing kids. Now I know. I know. I already said that, but I'm just. I just feel like Gray the Loud's like raspy voice she did with Puppy Corn could fit in with Josh Barkin. No, I can imagine her voice uh, uh, saying Nimbus, you know, because Josh because Josh says that all the time in the book. So yeah, I could see, so, yeah, I could see her saying Nimbus in this movie. I can like imagine her saying Nimbus. If now that's all I have in mind. For those of you who really have suggestions, please let me know in the comments below because I need people who generally don't say, oh, I mean, I, I mean, I've only seen the book. Like the cover of it, I'm gonna pretend like no. I need genuine people who actually have read the books to tell me suggestions about what should happen in the in the in the potential movie for the terrible twos, because I love this book. It needs to be turned into a movie made by people who actually care about this movie. Anyways, yeah, see ya. I know I said I was gonna do a top ten favorite movie favorite movies with Mr. Boba, but personal issues came out, so maybe next time. I don't know. Bye bye.